then I was free. Right. Evidently, I performed properly and I said the right things. Right. And right. I remember as a girl coming up in the Pentecostal church that, I that the people that prayed for me and prayed over me right. did not let me up until they were satisfied <laughs> that I had received yeah. from the Lord in accord with what they felt was what was supposed to happen. And so, and when I did not seem to have it correctly, they told me to come back the next night and get back down on my knees in front of what was then a wooden folding chair and pray some more until I got it and got it to their satisfaction. And when I got it to their satisfaction, they said with one voice, now. Now. Now that's it. They said, now that's the real thing right there. They said, all right, keep going, baby. Just keep right on going, because that's the real thing. They said, get on out of the way. Give us some room, because that thing there, what's happening there, is the real thing. And I got up from the real thing and I went on out <laughs> in the world. And I found out that the real thing that happened to me that night still did not permit me to be the real me. Come on, baby. Can I just tell you the truth? In fact, if I were to be perfectly honest with you today, the real thing was more of a hindrance yes. to my becoming the real me Come on, Bishop. Right, Bishop. than what I had before I went okay. right. to the Terry service right. and received the real thing. You right. understand me? Come on. Because the expectations over my life were inconsistent with my reality. Well, come on. Who am I talking to? Come on, baby. And so I want to tell this story just one more time and say to you that there was a time for us who are African Americans and the progeny of slaves. There was a time for us when Massa Lincoln <laughs> declared the Emancipation Proclamation. And the Emancipation Proclamation suggested that all the slaves were free. What was problematic about the Emancipation Proclamation at its time was that all the word didn't get to Texas. Now, my family on my mother and father's side are from Texas. And the word didn't get to Texas. So my kin people would have been directly affected. My foremothers and forefathers directly affected. We were slaves that were owned by Irish people. Okay. Right. My family names are Irish and English, Connor and Hamilton. And my people were in Texas. And so this hits me very close because my folks were directly affected by the events I want to bring to our memory again. This Juneteenth weekend, General Gordon Granger's announcement got to Texas that the war was over and the slaves were free. Were free. It was called General Order Number Three. And this is what it said. It said, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation of the Executive of the United States yeah. that all slaves are free. This involves absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and former slaves uh -huh. and the connection hereunto yes. existing between them becomes now that of employer and free laborer. Yeah. We's free. <laughs> what was problematic about it is that the announcement came June 19, 1865. Two and a half years after Massa Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which became, by the way, official September 22, 
1862 and became effective January 1, 1863. And it's problematic because all of that time, our people continued slave labor. Now somebody knew. Look at somebody say, somebody knew. Let me say it again. Say, somebody knew. And somebody very conveniently and purposefully kept this information out of the earshot of the slaves on the plantations which were bountiful in Texas. You ever been to Texas? Everything in Texas is big. We stayed at a hotel during fellowship in Texas. 